Hmm, someone in the comments said that this Benny bot looks like an Instapot. I don't know what they're talking about. I think they're just trying to pull smoke up my, you know way. But, anyways, let's get going. Now it seems like the new crazy charging docks are getting bigger and bigger these days. Look at this. Hold on one second. Oh my gosh, they so heavy. Look at this, guys. Can you compare the difference here? Why is this thing so huge? Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Nathan, his school masters. So it seems like blow up vacuums have definitely came a long way since the early 1900s. We got self imaging bins, we got robot vacuums with front facing camera, advanced light on navigation, plus now we have robot vacuums that can self clean themselves. So in this video, we're going to do a head to head comparison with the Bidding Bot N1 versus the Nawa T10. Yes, everyone's been waiting about the Nawa T10, and we're going to see if this robot is right for you or if you should get the Bini Bot N1. We'll go over the specs, we'll go over the cleaning performance, and we'll go over some of the unique features that both these robot vacuums have. Alright, before we begin, make sure you, am I doing this right? Like and subscribe, give me a great big thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my channel because I cover a lot of great content, and stay tuned because I got some new robot vacuums coming down the pipeline. Alright, let's get started. First of all, I want to give credit to Mr. Eevee. I found the channel and they actually have an unboxing video of the Narwhal T10. I'm actually jealous because I missed the Indico promotion period, so now I cannot get a Narwhal. So in this video, as a disclaimer, I'm going to use their footage to help showcase the Narwhal T10, but definitely check out their channel. Man, look at these guys. They definitely know how to do an unboxing. They lay out all the parts so you can clearly see what's included. They got the robot. They have the side brushes. They have magnetic tape. They got filters, water filters. They have this cord looking thing. I believe it's like a power cable. They also have extra mopping pads. They have the instruction booklet. They even have a cleaning tool. Wow, they're such professionals. Okay, let's go ahead and check the other end of the spectrum. Look at this guy. This guy has no clue what he's doing. He just dumps everything out on a table, and he basically leaves his Vinny Bot in one in a plastic bag. I don't think it's going to work very well, but we'll see how well his Vinny Bot works. All right, let's keep on going here. So the Vinny Bot in one, I've had this guy for about a month or so, and let me talk about some of the unique cleaning mechanics. You notice this wheel here? This is actually a bopping pad. It's a traditional hybrid mopping robot, where if you look underneath, you actually have the extractor bar, it's a spinning extractor bar, and you also have this side brush here. They actually call it the snail touch, but you notice that it kind of extends out to help reach hard to reach places. The Nawa T10 offers dual counter rotating mopping pads, which will help remove the dirt and grime off your floors, but there's a couple downsides to this system. The Nawa has a very unique design, you press a button and it comes out of its little home. I like the design of it, so it prevents the user accidentally from bumping the robot off its docking station. Now take a look at the attachment here. It has the dual side brush and a suction only port. And in order to do the mopping pads, you actually have to install them by hand. Unfortunately, the Nawa doesn't do both vacuuming and mopping simultaneously, and there's no spinning extractor bar. So this robot's designed for hardware floors only. So in Nawa's Promo video looks like it can vacuum carpets and small dust particles on hardware floors. I do like the slim profile of the narwhal. So the biggest downside to the Vinny Bot in one is its shape and size. You can clearly see it's a very tall robot vacuum, close to about 5 inches, where most robot vacuums stand anywhere from 1.75 inches up to about 3 inches. So this guy won't be going under any low hanging furniture, couches anytime soon. So if you're looking for a sleeker, self-cleaning robot vacuum, the Nawa T10 is your best option. So due to the smaller shape and size of the Nawa T10, it can definitely get into more places and it's able to clean more areas around furniture. You can see it can easily squeeze between these types of chair legs and was able to effectively clean around the posts. With the dual side brush system, it does really well grabbing dirt and debris. I do like the dual side brush system versus the single side brush system on the Vinny Bot N1. Okay, let's see how well the Nawa T10 can navigate around this area. You can see that the only way out is where the robot came in, and it's a very tight squeeze. Now, the best robot vacuum I've experienced is the Roblox, where it's able to effectively navigate these tight corners. We'll see if the Nawa T10 can do the same thing. So the Nawa T10 also has really strong suction, around 2,000 pascals. Also has long battery life in its mopping only mode, around 3 hours, covering 2,150 square feet. 
get about an hour and a half or up to two hours with the Vinny bot depending on the power settings. Now one thing to know about the Vinny bot is you do have the option to change our different vacuum levels or power levels. You also have the option to either mop or don't mop in different areas. Both the robot vacuums don't have dedicated carpet detection sensors which will avoid carpet automatically. You do have to set those up within the app so make sure you light them up or this could happen. So once the Vinibot lowers its mopping pad, it can apply up to 300 grams of downward force. This helps with move the dirt and grime. You can see that it can raise and lower itself whenever it thinks it's going to strike at the wall or something with its mopping pad. You can see that it can also mop your carpets. This is an extra feature. I'm just kidding. So, with both the robot vacuums, the Vinibot and the Narwhal, they don't have dedicated carpet detection sensors. So you do have to create keep out zones or no mopping zones within the app which is fairly easy to do. Just make sure you don't go onto your carpet because the robot will mop your carpets. With the Vinibot N1, it does have the ability to raise its mopping pad so you can transition from hardwood floors over to a carpeted area and back onto a hardwood floor area. This is very unique. Most robot vacuums, you have to physically remove the mopping pad before the robot can transition onto carpet. Hey Osmo, you want to straighten out the carpet for me? Thanks Osmo, you're the best robot vacuum I can ever ask for. So the Osmo is the only robot vacuum I know of that has the advanced carpet detection and carpet avoidance. Okay, so on the Vinibot, it's very similar to the Nawa T10 where you actually have a clean water tank right here and you have a dirty water tank right here. I'm making a mess here. So this is the drip fit tray where it actually collects all the dirt. So what's unique about the Vinibot in one is there's an actual dirt tray which will capture all the dirt and debris. Alright, can you guys see this? Here's all the dirt that the Vinibot in one captured. So this user looks like the tiles are pretty clean, but if you look at the fresh water tank and the dirty water tank, it actually demonstrates how dirty the water actually gets. So even though the floors look fairly clean, there's a lot of dirt and grime that you can't see with the naked eye. But if you run your fingers across the floor, you will be able to feel that dirt and grime. So that's actually pretty disgusting to see all that dirt. Since both robot vacuums have a smart LiDAR navigation system, they have the usual app features like keep out zone, area select, room select. And on the Minibot N1, you also have the ability to save up to three maps. There is an update coming to the Narwhal that will have the same capabilities. So both Robot vacuums have the exact same cleaning pattern where they start out with the perimeter of the room to grab all the dirt and debris from your baseboards and then they'll fill in that perimeter with a back and forth cleaning pattern. The Nawa is pretty quiet in mopping operation since it does have a vacuum motor around 45 decibels but once it returns back to its dock to clean itself it's actually quite loud. So both robots have the capability to stop mid-job to clean their mopping pads. This is very important because you don't want to have dirty mopping pads going across the floor and it helps keep the dirt and grime off your floors. Now with the washing process, both units are very loud and they will scrape the dirt off the mopping pads and then they pre-wash them so they're fresh again. So the Nawa uses a traditional dustbin, it's just made out of plastic, also has a filter system. I can't remember if it's washable or not, I couldn't find any information on it. But it looks like it's a fair sized dustbin, maybe around 300 milliliters. It's not the largest, but it definitely does the job. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Vinibot N1, and I'll tell you about the unique system that the Vinibot has. The option to do reusable bags shown here, or you can get disposable bags as well. So one downside of the Vinibot is it is kind of tricky to get the bag back installed. I like just a simple dustbin where you just drop it in and install it. Both the robots have a dedicated wall sensor which is really nice for going along the edges. But I did find that the Nawa did do a little better around furniture and obstacles. 
Okay, so that's just a quick look at the Bilba A1 versus the Nawa G10. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my video because it really helps the channel out. And stay tuned for a lot of new content and new videos. Alright, see you later.